Now, a very good morning to all our viewers at home and abroad. I'm delighted to be here with a very special guest on a very special subject uh, today, which in fact is worrying many medical professions, many psychiatrists, psychotherapists across the country. And that's the whole area of mental health. Now, over the last number of years in various budgets, millions of euro have been diverted from the mental health budget to different departments. But in the course of the emergence of this pandemic worldwide, a global pandemic as it is now, we have seen and listened to evidence of where people are having major mental health problems of all ages, at home, at school, no home, no school, no socialising and whatever. And I'm delighted to be joined by Limerick's Derry O'Malley, who is a qualified psychotherapist practising in Limerick City. Limerick City. Derry, it's, Derry, it's great to talk to you this morning and thank good, you. Good morning, John, and thank you for the opportunity. Derry, it's, it's, it's certainly, um, as the pandemic gains momentum mm -hmm. and as the, the variants of the uh, virus spread, we're looking at probably three or four lockdowns to date in the last year yes. of March. Mm -hmm. And that has had an incredible mental health strain on people of all ages. Now, from your practicing mm -hmm. um, in, in Limerick, how, how do you find it? What's your opinion? Yes, there is a, a kind of a general rise in the level of, for the want of a better term, angst that, that yeah. people are feeling. Mm -hmm. And to view this thing really in a kind of the biggest picture as possible, because we're talking really about two different things. We're talking about what you just said there, which is a global worldwide pandemic, pandemic that's affecting the whole of the world. And then there's how I, as an individual, deal with that information. And they're two opposing things. They're, sorry, they're two polar things. Right. So I have no input into the vaccine itself as an individual. I'm not a, I'm not a specialist. I'm not a virologist. Um, I don't have any of that information. But yet I'm being bombarded every day by huge amounts of problem-orientated information that every nugget and soundbite of information is problematic to me. And so therefore we're constantly being exposed to situations over which we feel we have no control. Now the fastest way to distress a human brain is to take away choice. Other than physical violence, the fastest way to distress a human brain is to take away choice. And if you think about it, on the 12th of March last year, just over a year ago, we all gave up our choices. And we did for all the right reasons. We did it for a, for a social good, for a common good. But human beings need certain psychological um, needs to be met on a day-to-day -day basis for us to be emotionally well. And when we, when we were locked down, all of those psychological me, um, needs were removed or the, or the ability to get them easily or healthily. So, for example, we need to feel secure. Yeah, mm -hmm. we need to feel secure. Well, with this pandemic, pandemic going on, nobody feels secure. We don't know what's happening. Yeah. We also need to make choices. We've all given up our choices. Now, for better or for worse, that's not what I'm here to discuss. No. But the, the impact of not being able to do things that we would normally do without any thought involved, what I call the ordinary, everyday kind of micro decisions that we would make that were completely risk-free. So I could say, oh, I think I need to go down to Dunn's and get a pair of socks or, you know, I need to go and get my car washed or I need to go. And we could make all, now we've second guess every one of those decisions. So what would normally be a kind of a flow of a mental process, almost like exercise. So when you, when you go to the gym and you're lifting weights, the actual exercise itself has no function other, other than to strengthen your capacity to, fun, to function well. So those little micro decisions that we make every day, to a large extent, have no function. As in, OK, I'll wash the car. OK, I'll cut the grass. OK, I'll go up to my mother and, give her, um, and cut her grass. Small little micro decisions. But each one of those strengthens our decision-making process that, that in itself builds resilience for change 
for flexibility, for dealing with ambiguity. But because the whole world has stopped, a lot of those decisions can't be made now. We have to second guess everything. Also, human beings need intimacy. We need a small group of people around us who will accept us for who we are. And if you stop and think about it, we are either overexposed to a small group of people or family, or the other side of it, there are loads of people who are isolated, who have no exposure to anybody. So that natural intimacy that normally flows again without us having to think too much about it, it's all been stopped. And there's loads of other kind of opportunities that human beings have to have to be emotionally well. For example, we need to be connected into large groups of people. So going and watching a GA match, you know, going to your local Tai Chi class, you know, going to your art class, you know, being with a, with a group of, of like-minded people with a, with a purpose in which people are engaging with concentration and achieving something of value. All that stuff has been taken away as well. Now, to counterpass that, we need privacy. But we now have either too much privacy or we can't get any privacy because people are living in houses where there's too many people and nobody can, can get out. Um, we've lost status. Our status in life is very important. It's hugely important. And the status we get from being in work, from being the go-to person for somebody else, you know, yeah. ask, ask, Pat Barry, ask Pat Barry about that. He knows all about that. Ask Mary about that. She knows about that. You know, ask so-and-so. But we, we can't be that to people anymore. So we've lost the evidence that we can contribute to society. Yeah. And, yeah. and because of that as well, we've lost meaning and purpose. Now, those are the psychological needs that human beings need to have available yes. without effort. Mm. So th there, is, there is a consensus there among Irish mm. people. Now. And, and firstly, I disagree totally with this uh, media euphoria that we hear day mm. in and day out that the mm. Irish people are great, the Irish people are meeting all the protocols. They're mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. They're totally fed up. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have a rise in the cases per day, because yes. people and young people and middle aged people, mm -hmm. you cannot lock down people where we can't go into a restaurant or a coffee shop and have a coffee or a tea or a scone. God, yes. yes, you can't go to your local pub yes. and sit down and have a chat with your neighbor or somebody mm -hmm. like that. Gone. Yes. You can't. My hair. <laughs> I, I my, I know, John, I just didn't want to say anything. Go on. No, but I, I have three in one aisle and glue. <laughs> I to keep it down. But, I mean, I resemble, I was told, my ancestors who were cavemen in Kerry mm -hmm. uh, thousands of years ago. Now I'm beginning to feel it. Exactly. Haircut. Yeah. Women are going out of their minds. They can't Absolutely. get their hair going, which mm -hmm. is a practical, normal socializing aspect. A very important thing. Mm -hmm. which I discussed with Dr. Mary Onan yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, Muslims and Christians mm -hmm. are not allowed, in many ways, do their regular, which is important to Absolutely. many, many yeah. people, mm -hmm. cannot go to exercise their religious right. Yes. And I find that objectionable because mm -hmm. our history, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a rant here now. With the but our history shows us, going back to penal times, where we were not allowed mm -hmm. to actually exercise our religious right. Mm -hmm. Evictions are coming down the line massively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had that in 1847 mm -hmm. upwards. Mm -hmm. So what's repeated in the 19th century is now being repeated in the 21st century. Yes. And I think, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe you can help me on this. I think that the government per se are listening too much to Neffet. Because we're hung up on statistics listening to RTE until it comes out by grey hair, the bit I've left. And like statistics, this, statistics, that, and people are bombarded. Why can't we just get a report every day and say X amount of cases, X amount of hospitals, move on. But no, it's analysis, analysis until we're driven mad. I think, Derry, just to, to, to network into your professionalism, that's one aspect of causing terrible mental strain. Is this thing? But see, that was, a, yes. You see, the human, contrary to popular opinion, the human brain is not a happy bunny. The human brain is a, is a stress organ. It is designed 
to pay more attention to what will go wrong than what will go right. And we actually do it in a five to one ratio. We're five times more likely to say yes, but than to say yes. yes. And so when we have, and because of that, it's designed to pay attention to potential problems. So when you have a media whose job is to get people to pay attention to them. Now, how do you get people to pay attention to them? You get them to emote. You mm. either make them angry or you make them fearful. Yes. Yeah. Now, whether that's print media, whether that's the news media, whatever it is, the, the, the model of the beast is, I've got to find something wrong here and tell everybody about it. Right. And so if that's the model, John, what you said, why can't we just have a report? Well, the model isn't built to do that. The model is built to keep attention all the time. And that, that literally ties into how the anxious human brain works. Mm -hmm. If we have a problem, we think we have to focus on it all the time. Because if I'm not focusing on it, I'm not fixing it. Yes. But the reality is when we have a problem we can't do anything about, the most, the most, the most difficult thing to do is to continue focusing on it. Yes. And so, so it depends where we wish to go with the interview, whether we want to fix COVID or do we wish to help people to have strategies in which they can live with the situation they're in because we can't change it. And I have my own political, political views and you have your political views and everywhere in the world has political views, but none of that is going to help people to deal with how they deal with the situation they're in. And because, and the reason is, it's, it's, it is an ambiguous situation to which there is no answer. Now, what makes human beings anxious is novelties, things we haven't done before. Now, nobody has done COVID before. Nobody's done a global pandemic in this way before. Nobody alive has, yeah. And so this is all, this is all new to us, yeah. Also, unpre unpredictability. We don't know what's going to happen next, right? Also, ego threat. Am I safe? Are other people doing the right thing? Yes. And so what it means is our biology is being hyper aroused all the time. We're, our hearts are beating faster than they normally would. Most of us are breathing higher than we normally would. We're producing more stress chemicals than we normally would. And so there's two different things going on here. There's the pandemic itself. And there's yeah. how individual human beings are reacting to it. And that's where the mental health issue is and that's where the focus for individuals need need to be. And it's the difference between focusing on content or focusing on context. So, right. so, so there's a context in which an individual who has no power needs to engage in this process. Now it's different for people who have power and authority and influence, journalists, politicians, um, clergymen, educators, all these people will have a role to play, but the average Joe Soap doesn't have a role to play. And so if we're sitting down listening to other people trying to solve a problem that they really can't solve, as a spectator, I only, I only get more distressed. Yes. And so listening to the news all the time, reading the newspapers all the time, having yes. RT news on the background all the time, is like, it's like putting petrol, it's like putting, putting rocket fuel in a car. <laughs> it'll get you. It'll get you from A to B, but it's making scrap metal of your engine. It, it, exactly. Yeah. So no, we I'm need we good. need to be able to step back from it all. We need yeah. to be able to put it aside. We need yeah. to have we need to have to have a timeout and a covert free zone for ourselves. On that very point, we can achieve that level of covert free timeout for ourselves. Yes even in the middle of all of this absolutely negativity and bombardment absolutely, absolutely. probably bombarding people myself but i just say we can take a step back and we can say okay that's happening but what about ourselves yeah so let me ask you a question you're sitting there in your lovely nice studio beautiful studio actually congratulations to everybody involved in lear absolutely. yeah Great. now at this very moment john while you're sitting here doing this interview other than putting up at me is there anything bad happening? Well, at this I, moment, I, while you're sitting here in front of me, but I'm sitting here. Yeah. 
people passing away. No, for you, John. For you, John. Oh, for me. For you. Oh, at this person. very moment, while you're sitting here, is there anything bad happening to you? No. Other than, other than putting up with me, no. No, no, I, I putting up with you is great. Excellent. No, nothing happened. Excellent. So does that mean you're all right? I am okay. Does that mean you're safe? I'm safe, yes. And John, that's the feeling that's missing. Right. Correct. Good point. So the more we are projecting out to other people dying and this is happening, while it's all true, right. it's actually hugely destructive to our own well-being because we can only cope with a certain amount, especially if we can't change anything. We can't. Exactly. And human beings are very good at doing hard things. And you said a while ago, but you know, the you know, you that you were getting sick of listening to the government saying that Irish people are being great. See, we don't need all of Irish people to be great. We just need enough of us to be great. And again, if you look back through history, changes are never 100 percent There's no. always a percentage of a tipping point that then shifts something. So whether it's a yeah. political view, whether it's an ideology, whether it's a religious belief. It starts small, it develops, gets a certain momentum and then flips into something completely differently and causes a change of consciousness in the process. Yes. Yes. Now, when we're focusing on problems, what we get stuck is perfectionism. And that means that everybody has to do everything. Everything has to be perfect. And the problem is that's what media are doing. Media are looking for the mistakes all the time. It's all about gotcha stuff. It's always, well, do you mean this? Did you mean that? Will you say that last week? And what, you, what we're doing is we are evoking huge levels of uncertainty that are totally unnecessary. I agree. And it basically, it is, it is, it, it is a, almost a blood sport. You know, and it's just about entertainment. Now, for some people who love it, great, do most, do loads of it. But there's a huge amount of people where this is destructive to them. And we, this, is where, this is how we should be being, being minded more. It's not just about the problem. It's not just about the problem. And we need to accept there is a problem. And we accept that we have to accept that there are a lot of people who have differing views on this problem. And we can accept that these views are very strong views. Very but the problem with strong emotion is just because our emotions are very strong, it doesn't make them accurate. Yes. No, I, I, see, I see your point on that. You see, there, there, I, I'll give you an example of mm -hmm. where I get great solace. Yes. Is the countryside. Yes. Uh, walking my dogs out in the morning. Mm -hmm. And being with them and being with people or, well, social distance, of course, with people that I love or like. Yes. And helping other people. Yes. Connecting other people that have various problems. And exactly. Over the years, I've been told, uh, Derry, that that was my, what's the word they call it, forte. Yes. That yeah. Media, that's what I was doing. I didn't realize I was doing it. Of course. Medical people told me, you have to take a bow because that's what you have been doing. Yeah. So this is what I love. So this is where I get my solace Brilliant. and gratification. And may I, ex may I explain to you or give you a model why that works and why that's successful? Yes. See, the, the human body has, was developed to function in the physical world. Mm. Right? And what that means is we could take over a piece of territory, right? And we'd have to check out that territory to make sure it was okay. Yeah. Right? So when human beings walk in a natural environment with a large vista, Yes. Where you can see the mountains, the sky, the rivers. And when you're walking forward, your eyes are moving laterally. And what we're right. doing is we're checking out. And what we're getting is a feedback. There's no lions. There's no tires. There's no wolves. There's no floods. There's no earthquakes. There's no forest fires. I am physically okay. Even though consciously we don't realize what we're doing, that's what we're actually doing. And once we can look up and look out into the large vista of the world around us and see we're physically shaped, it then frees us to put our head down and do the minutia, the small things that need more of a mental input concentration so we can focus on the quality things that make life work, where we can share, we can do reciprocity, we can focus together. Yeah, because if you don't feel safe, when we're looking down, we keep looking up all the time to see where the danger is. Yes, that, 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 that is it. You see, this is one thing very, I, I think to hit the nail on the head again, is that um, people grew up with negativity, surrounded mm. by it. Yes. So when the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. we had the T-shirt at the time last year saying about 
uh, a vista. Yes. Uh, it was like all my, I mean, when <laughs> I give you a very good example, I can laugh at it now, but not then. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when the, the news was coming out, breaking news, breaking news, breaking news, the Tish mm -hmm. is going to address the nation. I, I'm, I'm sorry for being minute here, but I thought it was that we were invaded by Martians okay. or something. Okay. That mm -hmm. everyone said, oh my God, what, what's going on? What, yes. what is he going to say? Mm -hmm. Now, I know what he said transpired into something that very serious. People lost their lives, people in hospitals, frontline workers. Um, the whole area of our normal social well-being was gone at 12 midnight that night. Yes. Bang. Yes. The shuffle came down. Yes. Yes. So to follow on your very, very good analysis, this is where we were subjected so many times on our lives to negativity. Then this happened and people said, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Exactly. That was it. Yeah. And you see what that does for human beings, that, that switches on what's called the orientation response, where we orientate to novel experience, where we have to figure yeah. out. And on a very fundamental level, what we're figuring out, can I eat this or will this eat me? Mm. Yeah. On a very fundamental biological level. So the more we're focusing on the problem all the time, exclusively, the more we get a feeling of insecurity. And the problem is insecure people take information literally. The more emotional we are, the more our thinking brain shuts down. Let me give you an example. I'm sure it's an example. Or, may, or maybe you may not. Well, let, me, let me just say it. I'm sure there have been loads of times in your life where you got very angry with people. Let's, yeah. say, lo let's say loved ones, family members. Yes. And you notice the more angry you got, the more right you felt. Right. Yeah. And another thing and another thing. And eventually we end up saying horrible things to the people we love. Right. But while we're doing it, we feel absolutely convinced. Yes, I am right. I am right. Yes. And then we walk away, bang a door, go off, whatever we do. And we yes. calm yes. down. And then in the morning we go, oh, Jesus. Yes. What am I what? done? What have, I, what have I done? How, how am I going to take that back? Yeah. And you see, the problem is when we focus on problems through emotion, we get locked into high emotion. And high emotion makes people stupid in the sense where it reduces our ability to function and it reduces our ability to think clearly and reduces our ability to accept a status quo in which we can build and move on with. In other words, it reduces our ability of the acceptance of where we are. Mm -hmm. And if we can't accept where we are, we can't go anywhere else. Right. And here's the point as well. Um, it, 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 it feeds into that as well. How many times have men and women in the globe, in the mm -hmm. world, the planet, yes. wake up at two or three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. toss and turn? Yes. Oh my God, this is coming down the line. Yes. This is coming down the line. What am I going to do here? What am I going to do there? I can't, yes. I can't, I can't. Yes, yes. It's happened to me of so course. many times at two or three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. That you know what? I'm so rested, so I could get out of bed and start cutting the lawn. You yes. know, five yes. times, do a ten mile run. Yes. I'm so yes. exercised and I can't yeah. relax. Exactly. That is, that is the point. And that is that, what we're doing to ourselves now. Make now, us do something. now, can I say something? The pandemic isn't doing that to us. Mm. Our reaction to the pandemic is doing that to us. Yes, correct. So it's not what's going on. It's how we're interacting with it is what the problem is. Because human beings are hugely adaptable. We can live in horrendous situations for long periods of time. Yeah, but see. we do it more successfully when we know it's going to end. Mm. We can all do very hard work as long as you know it's going to end. We can sign <laughs> up to, a, we can sign up to a, a, a university course for a year because we want to upper qualifications. But we know it's only a year. We're going to work very hard, but it's going to finish. We can get the builders in to finally build on that extension to the house. We'll be spitting dust for two months, but at the end of it, we'll have a beautiful extension. It'll be lovely. We can put up with it. See, this is what part of the reason people get so angry with builders, because they walk away and don't finish it. And now we can't do it. And, and nothing, we get so distressed when we can't. And so this is part of what's going on. We don't know when this is going to finish. 
No. So it's, it's very challenging to do it. But really, we just need enough people to do it. This is the issue here. We need enough people behaving appropriately. We don't need everybody. And once you have enough people behaving appropriately, what you get is tolerance, what you get is acceptance, and what you get is allowing other people to do what they need to do. So bearing in mind that we need to make decisions that are mutually beneficial for everyone. And that means everyone has to give and take a little bit. And people don't have to be right. Mm. We just have to be cooperative with a, with, a, with a single purpose and have enough flexibility built into the system to allow people to accept kind of a, a kind of a 25% of what we're all going to agree to do. And then the rest we can negotiate. Exactly. It's, and, it's uh, a mental attitude. That's it, yeah. But that, uh, mental, but that mental attitude needs to be, needs to be nurtured, mm -hmm. needs to be minded, needs to be facilitated. It can't be do, it can't, that can't happen if you're all given out to each other all the time. And that's what the pandemic has caused. The intolerance in the supermarket lines, the abuse, the guardie, to security people, to yeah, doctors, yeah, to yeah. Who are family it's, members, whole lot. I think there's, I think there's a very strong metaphor going on here about this whole COVID, COVID, and the metaphor is this: we have to stay away from each other until we know how to mind each other. And that's what the metaphor of this is. Yes. So and you my, can get tight. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. My my message then after that to people is: leave me alone. Don't come near me. <laughs> you know, you're barred from even yeah. talking to me. But no, yeah. it's a very good point. But also, but then it's but also I have if I can say, okay, people need to stay away from me, but I, I also have a responsibility for those people as well. I mean minding each other, you know what I mean? Because human beings are social animals. We're at our best when we're cooperating with reciprocity. We become bigger than the sum of our parts. And so this is why we need to balance this out so that we're not afraid of each other. And to do that, we need to, be, we need to accept a basic set of rules. In this context, the better set of rules is really around hygiene. You know, washing of hands, um, wearing of masks, um, you know, not sitting in small enclosed spaces. Um, yeah. uh, inhaling the air that other people have inhaled um, and to, be, to accept that as kind of the 25% that we'd all do and then we can all find the 75% in there where we do the rest ourselves you know where, where we can have a compromise where nobody's going to be 100% right here and very few people are going to be 100% wrong as well now on the, there's, there are always extremes you know there are, there are extremes that prove the rule yeah. Um, and we've got to find that place in the, in the middle. And this, this virus has just brought out the dysfunctionality of the world we live in. The world we live in is totally, completely dysfunctional. And the authorities and the powers of, of B are using an, a model that's way too old and just doesn't work in a global world. You know, I mean, the, and, it, and it became so obvious with this whole vaccine thing. We went straight back into nationalism. And yes. we, can't solve, we can't solve the world through nationalism. We are all, this is the world, is the world, we're the human race. It cannot be denied anymore. No, no aspect of human race is more valuable than other aspects of the human race. And there's, there's, the, there's the quote, is, is glory not that you love your country, but rather than you love your kind. Yeah. And that's where we need to be going. And, and be, the reason why this is taking so long is because authorities are getting tied up using older strategies about, yes. about scarcity, about protectionism, yes. about um, uh, exceptionalism, and everything else being put first rather than the individual, what's good for human beings. Because if, if you were to sit down and I used to ask you, you know, what does the world need? Most people come up with the same kind of things. It's actually, it isn't rocket science. You know, we, we need to make sure that people can, can eat. We need to make sure people can have education. We need to make sure that people can make a living. There's no, it's not rocket science. We actually have all the resources to do that. We just don't have the wherewithal to do it. And this virus is forcing us into accepting and acknowledging that the world, the way we're running the world at the moment is designed to not be good for the world and therefore not for us as well. And it hasn't happened in a vacuum. It hasn't been, so this, this, virus isn't a one-off thing that kind of like a Martian arriving suddenly out of no place 
we've been lived in books written for 20 years, specifically warning us what's going to happen about vaccines. And the only way to deal with global vaccines is global cooperation. Yes. But if you if we have the Chinese and the Americans and the Russians all doing their own thing and all, you know, it's we're, that's where and that's what happens then, the angst of that, because everybody looking at it knows ah, this hasn't really been done right. You know, this is really clumsy here. You know, the, the, and we blame it on communication. It's not communication. It's a strategy. And the strategy isn't a bug. It's a feature. <laughs> right. It's the yeah. way it's the way we do things. And so we are being distressed by the processes by which we're trying to handle this situation. And whether we, we can have the best cure in the whole world, but it's not going to be effective until it's available to the over 5 billion people in the world without exception, without, without, exception. without priorities, without yes. any kind of, um, yes. what's the word I'm looking for, um, jingoism or whatever. But that's just not in the system. The system isn't, the system isn't capable of making those decisions. Oh, now, you, oh. now, isn't it interesting that you as an individual is capable? You as an individual is capable yeah. of making those decisions. And it makes so much sense to do it. it but does. the minute it goes into the structure, it falls apart because the structure is out of step. Yeah. It has Pardon? fallen. Yes, Very exactly. Globally. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we can see now further lockdowns coming across Europe. Um, into Britain as well because their cases are rising. The, you are so correct there in saying that the system is wrong. exactly. Well, and see, and the and the evidence of that is we're not managing this, and therefore we have more lockdowns. Now we can get upset about the lockdowns because they affect our day to day life. But then, or but that's not what the issue is. The issue is why are we having the lockdowns, <laughs> and it is because we're not getting the reciprocity and cooperation on a global level with the, 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 it was interesting, you know, the, um, the millennium project that was done um, right. when the, yeah. And they came up with a whole lot of um, uh, yeah. issues that the world is going to have to deal with in the future. I think they had 20 threats to the world as they move forward. And obviously climate change was one, poverty was one, education, but you know what the ninth one was? The ninth threat to humanity, the inability to make decisions. <laughs> the biggest threat to humanity moving into the moving into the millennium was that we couldn't make up our mind about nothing. <laughs> and isn't isn't that interesting? Later. And same. this is the evidence. And so this is just and so all this is the result of that, you know. So we can give out as much as we want, but like I said, that's what the politicians need to do and the people who have influence need to do. But as an individual, for my own mental health, it is hugely important for me not to go into those spaces because we yeah. just get chewed up and spat out. Correct. Correct. I, I and the, the political systems across the world have tried to tinker and solve a 21st century pandemic with the old models, yes. which is working. And, you yeah. know, as a, a, an individual said to me in my hometown in Glynn, he said, why, why can't somebody in the government say, right, there's the government jet, go to Britain, go to Northern Ireland, swing across to Brussels, collect the vacant or the, the, the disused um, surplus of vaccines and bring them back. A problem, a solution. Why we can't do it? Because we're so sucked up into Europe, as you said, to a global system that can't solve this situation. Case yes. in point. Yes. And, and, and because of that, when it comes to mental health, mm. which is my interest, of course. We have to disengage individually from that. So the things we need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to maintain our mental health. Yeah. So we, we need to make sure we maintain structures in our day-to-day. -day. Mm -hmm. What I call the I have to things. So I have to fill the dishwasher. I have to have a shower and have a shave. Uh, I have to ring my brother and see if he's okay. I have to walk the dog. And that we make sure that we do, even though we may not want to do things, we must ensure that we do it because this, because this, these are the things that make our life work. You know, okay, okay, I need to pay my ESP bill, I need to pay the gas bill. You know, I need to do X, Y, or Z. And to the best of our ability, we need to be able to do those. So that gives us a kind of a structure, right? Mm -hmm. On top of that, then we need to do things for ourselves. Now, not in an egotistical way, not in a selfish way, but in a way that allows us to concentrate 
and to engage mentally in a process in which we produce something in the world. Now, that could be writing a poem. It could be doing art. It could be learning to bricklay. It could be learning how to fix a motorbike. It could be anything you want to do. It doesn't matter as long as there is a focus of attention and a sense of achieving something. Because what maintains resilience in the world is not about avoiding bad feelings. People, people think that if I can avoid bad feelings, I'm going to be okay. But the problem is the human brain produces bad feelings automatically. Yes. Right? We have to insert good feelings manually. Because the human brain is a threat organ, it is going to worry. If you give it too much unstructured time, it is going to worry. We have to interrupt that process by ensuring we do not have too much unproductive time and our unstructured time, and also to ensure that we're not inside in our head ruminating on issues over which we have no immediate influence. Correct. That's because, be, because that's what drives the anxiety. It's what drives, to give it a medical term, it's what I call the Jesus, Mary, and Joseph feelings. Yeah. That feeling of impending doom, there's something wrong all the time. And so right. we, need to, we need to be able... Now, for some people, um, walking the dog and being out in the fresh air is there expression yes. and it's the, and basically it's how we express ourselves and that's yes. what that is this is about then on top of that the third kind of stool is we need to be able to sit with ourselves in silence or in quietness we need to be able to st- shut down the thinking brain now a lot of, some of this have overlaps so going out for the walk being exposed to the nature is a wonderful way of shutting down the brain now mm. also sitting down and doing some relaxation or breathing exercises is another good way of doing it. Um, Art, another good way of doing it. So the the doing things for yourself can be a very practical thing, but also being with oneself in stillness, whatever that means. Engaging in that part of us, for the want of a better term, has a a spiritual aspect. Walking a spiritual path with very practical feet. Right? We don't have to be spending half an hour, three times a day contemplating our navels. It's just literally about taking moments to shift out of an external focus of attention into an internal focus of attention. Like I was saying a while ago, there are moments in every day that if we access them, they remind us yes. that there are aspects of each and every day in which now is a good time. To know now is a good time. And would you agree, finally, uh, Derry, that um, this pandemic with its widespread global negativity, do you think it has made people more aware of themselves, of other people, the vulnerability of themselves, the planet, the climate change? Do you think we will come out of this maybe better people in the long term? Well, Everything that is a challenge strengthens. Right. But the problem is each human being has their own capacity and awareness and, and skill set. And so yeah. some people will meet this with a very strong skill set and will come out the far side very strong in themselves with a sense of brilliant. We've bested this. We're out the far side. Let's get on with it. I've learned so much through this. And there's other people who may not have a skill set that's going to help them to do that. And those are the people then who are going to end up in feeling um, uh, diminished by it, which can then manifest as mental, il- mental illness in a broad sense of the word. And many of these people wouldn't, wouldn't even get a diagnosis of mental mm-hmm. illness. But, but what's happened is their core value around themselves has been traumatized with a small t. Right. Now, some people will be traumatized with a big T because things will happen to them that have really impacted on their lives. You know, deaths of loved ones, loss of job, losing houses, um, losing of health, long COVID. Loads of people are. And there's a gamut. So that to answer the question, there's a gamut of responses depending on the capacity of the person you're speaking with. But in yeah. generally, and again, if you go through history, we don't need everybody to be perfect. We just need enough people to get it right. And once you, once you get enough people to get it right, they're the ones who carry it into the next, the, into the next iteration of humanity. And therefore, they're the ones who help the other people along as well. And it's always been like that. It always will be. It's never black and white. It's never linear. 
It's yes. always a complexity, like in, like in families. We go through we go through phases in families where one or two people will be the main breadwinners to get up and goers. But in ten years time, it changes, and in thirty years time, now these people are the people that have been minded, and the younger people are now the. So there is no there is a continuity necessary. Now the problem with this pandemic, we're trying to look at it in a black and white linear sense, where we're looking for perfection all the time. And the, the reality in this context, perfection is seldom needed and rarely required. Yeah. We just need proficiency. Yeah, I agree with that. Big difference. Big and you difference. see, the more you argue, uh, the more one argues, the more we get into perfectionism. Because when, when we get emotional, we get stuck in black and white thinking. And in black and white thinking, you're either right or you're wrong. And there's nothing in the middle. Sweet. And that's where we are in a psychological situation that we've that's where we're stuck at the moment and it is independent of the pandemic and the fixing of the pandemic they are linked obviously together but it's like in a sense and and this is a clumsy analogy so forgive me um it's like parents don't need to tell children the minutia of the family financial problems it just makes children worry right now, we're the same. The problem is that our parents, which are the, which are the powers that be, are incompetent. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, of course. I can, I, I, and because I, they're not competent, the children, us, are not worried about it. <laughs> I know. Does that, does that make sense? That, that there are a lot of lessons in that. And yeah. Gary, I, I could talk all day to you, and I know when, when viewers mm -hmm. of Home and Abroad uh, view this interview, Hopefully, it will empower them as well in a small way, in a big way, to look beyond themselves and not negativity all the time. Mm. And, okay, we have to listen to the news, but then shut it off after yes. that. I say, look who I have around me. Look what I have around me. Let's protect that. And you've given the tools here today to start that pathway Yes. which can be done for everybody across the world. Yes. And the thing is, people are doing it every day. People have these skills. People yes. are doing it all the day. We're only paying attention to people who aren't. Right. And we're, and we're deleting all the competencies as if they aren't there because, the th because things aren't the way I want them to be. Correct. And there are okay. loads of people with these skills every single day who are we managing, have, who are managing. Yeah, and it's yeah. and you see, and the thing is, it's not about making this easy; it's about making it less challenging. Right, that's the difference. We can't make this easy, and it'll never be easy. Right. Our job yeah. is to make it less difficult and less challenging. So when we're in situations that aren't ideal, and we can't make them ideal, we have to make them less challenging, as we cope with the situation. Because we can cope, we can do very hard, difficult things. The only reason humanity has reached modernity is because we could do hard stuff. Yeah. And we learn from the hard stuff. We don't learn from the easy stuff. Exactly. Yes. But the, the easy stuff is all around us. If we could just exactly if we step in a different direction, access it. It doesn't cost money. No. It certainly does. Derry, for people, I know Mary and Pat will be highlighting your contact details, mm -hmm. but you have a website as well that you, you, you use as well. So if people want to link into that. I my To be honest with you now, um, and this is almost embarrassing, I'm not really a technical person. I have set up a website, but I don't pay much attention to it. Um, yes. I may need to do that now. Again, like I said, these challenging times make us okay. step up and do things that we wouldn't otherwise do. Yeah. Um, but my details, um, my, my phone number, I have a website. Um, my phone number, uh, if I may, um, yeah, is... Oh eight seven three six six seven six six six. Um, Not a sixes. <laughs> the, exactly, the devil made me do it. Um, and, <laughs> and, and and there is a lot. There is a lot. There are so many ways people can be helped. So many ways people. This is about skills. This is about skills. People can learn skills. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and it's worth doing it badly before we can do it right. Correct. So we have to give cut ourselves slack. We're doing it badly as we're getting it right. That yes. is the most important thing. 
Very, very good. Jerry, it was, uh, you know, inspirational talking to you. Uh, Thank you, John. Morning. And I know that is going to be a, a series of interviews mm -hmm. we will be doing with you over the short period or long, long period of time as well. And my special thanks, of course, to our guest, uh, Derry O'Malley, and Thank also you. to uh, Mary Honan and Pat Barry, who have engineered all of this. And our program here will be going out very, very shortly. So for people out there, men, women, and children who want help, it is there. And the one lesson that I've learned from Derry today is we don't have to spend big money on anything or money on anything at all. The power is within us to withstand the negativity, everything that's flung at us on a daily basis, on a 12 hour, 24 day basis as well. So from Derry O'Malley, Pat and Mary, and myself, John Prendergast on the What Matters program here with Lear Media TV, please do take care of yourselves and we'll be talking to you again in the next couple of hours. Gorda Mita Mogat, August Sloan.